Hello, welcome to lecture 3 of second module of the course. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion on transmission line and we will see how we can quantize a discrete transmission line. So, let us begin. In the last class, we completed our discussion on Cooper pair box. There, we saw that if we are to couple a Cooper pair dog box device to radiation, the radiation must be a microwave and in order to enhance interaction between a cooper pair box or two level system the kind of two level system that we encounter in circuit quantum electrodynamics it is better to put the qubit or the two level system inside a cavity because it will ensure long interaction time between the cooper pair box and the radiation and high intensity of the radiation inside the cavity and we can have a, a microwave cavity using the so-called transmission line and we discussed about transmission line it can be uh, constructed by considering say two metallic uh, wires parallel to each other or a coaxial uh, cable uh, two uh, concentric cylinders metallic cylinders uh, that is also a transmission line the advantage of this coaxial cable is that there would be hardly any stray field at all outside and that is advantageous and uh, the speed of the signal in both the cases is going to be constant that is it is not dependent on either wavelength or the frequency and we also learned that how this coaxial cable model which is a three-dimensional one can be utilized to design a two-dimensional version of the transmission line on a chip this we discussed and finally we discussed how this uh, 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 transmission line can be uh, represented in circuit using a circuit for that we uh, use this two parallel wire model uh, the idea was that we divided these parallel wires into a number of unit cell size of length a and each cell comprising of a capacitance and an inductance and this capacitance and inductance are linear in the cell size and ultimately our goal would be to make uh, the cell size smaller and smaller tends to zero so that it gives us a uh, finer grid and uh, our goal uh, today would be to discuss wave propagation in the transmission line and uh, basically to get a wave equation and convince you that okay indeed this model or this kind of setup supports uh, a transmission of signal and then we are going to quantize the transmission line finally uh, if time permits then we'll uh, start discussing transmission line resonators so before uh, go, we go further let me first remind you about the so-called lc circuit which is the most elementary uh, unit cell of transmission line so let us remind ourselves so we have an inductance and we have this capacitance here okay and first of all let me introduce the sign convention for the charge let us say the upper plate of this capacitor has positive charge and the lower plate has negative charge say the charge q okay uh, here it is represented by this capital Q and say the current uh, I current I flows in the direction as I uh, showing here then as you can see that the charge has to decrease with time so Q dot should be I can write it as minus I because charge is decreasing as the current is flowing and on the other hand if we look at the voltage drop across the inductance then 
it would be given by suppose this is the inductance and the voltage is applied along this direction from this positive to negative then this voltage drop across this inductance l would be l di dt because uh, it will take a bit of time uh, for the current to flow through it when you apply the voltage so this is the well-known expression all of you know on the other hand uh, the voltage across the capacitor is given by charge divided by the capacitance c and which is obviously equal to l di dt okay and or i can just write it as l i dot which i can further write because q dot is equal to i minus i here okay using this i can write it it as minus l q double dot so i get an e differential equation for the charge that is q by c is equal to minus l q double dot or i just write q double dot plus 1 by lc q is equal to 0 as you can easily see that this is a second order differential equation for uh, charge it is an equation of motion for charge in an lc circuit and who is we can write as q double dot plus omega square q is equal to 0 where obviously omega square is equal to 1 by lc so this is an well-known equation all of we know this equation tells us that charge q oscillates simple harmonically in an lc circuit now let us go back to our transmission line say there is a charge at every node and there is current flowing between the nodes say charge q denoted as qn in the nth node and then in n plus 1 at node the charge is denoted as q n plus 1 and here we in the n minus 1 at node charge is denoted as q n minus 1 and so on and uh, first actually we will consider the discretized version and then we will go over to the continuum version by assuming that the charges uh, vary very slowly as a function of position let the current flowing between the node n be denoted by i n that means say current that is flowing towards the node n let me denote it by i n and then current flowing towards node n minus 1 be denoted as i n minus 1 and current that is flowing towards the node n plus 1 let me denote it by i n plus 1 and so on uh, now you see the charge building up at a node is determined by current flowing into it and out of it so we can invoke the so-called charge conservation at a particular node if i invoke that in the for this nth node here then i can write this charge conservation as this say rate of change of charge at the nth node is equal to that is the current flowing towards this nth node and the current flowing out of it so this is one equation we obtain that is this equation let me uh, denote it as equation number one this equation is basically referring to the charge conservation principle on the other hand this current i n this current i n is driven by the voltage drop between this node n and n minus one and this voltage drop would be here in this n minus one one node the voltage drop would be q n minus one divided by c on the other hand here at the nth node it would be q n divided by c so this is the voltage drop difference in the voltage and that has to be equal to uh, the current through this uh, the voltage through this inductor l here and that would be l d i n d t so we get another equation for uh, using this voltage drop 
uh, thing okay the current let me reiterate again that this current in uh, is driven due to the voltage drop at node n minus 1 and n n okay so now let us see how these uh, two equations look uh, or appear in the continuum domain to do that uh, let us say let me draw the transmission line once again here this discretized version let me say i have like this this is the cap okay let me first draw it then i will explain so i have this n at node that is qn here and this is qn minus one current is flowing towards the n at node here and here it is uh, qn plus one so this is i n plus one and so on this is i n minus one and this is inductance is l capacitance is c okay let us say in the continuum limit as we have learned earlier that we can actually divide this transmission line into a number of cells say along this x direction if i just uh, break up this uh, transmission line into several small number of cells each cell of size say a so this is along the x direction i am taking now as a tends to zero i can assume that as the cell size is getting smaller and smaller let us say i have a current flowing through this transmission line that is smooth like this okay and this is a function of position now if i am interested in knowing the current at the nth node let us say at this particular point if i let us say i have okay something like this oops okay or at something like this this particular point in the n at node i have to evaluate the current and this will basically refer to x is equal to n into a and then current at the n at node is simply current that is measured at the point x is equal to n a so we can write actually the difference between the current in the node n plus one the difference between the current at n plus 1 and a i n at n n at node that would be nothing but the i can write it as it would be nearly equal to the slope of the current at the position x is equal to n a so i think you are getting the idea here i am just invoking or taking this when i am writing this expression i am using my knowledge of differential calculus so actually using this pres prescription i can write my equation number one as well as equation number two in the continuum limit that means when a tends to zero as follows let us say i have this search conservation equation q n dot i n minus i n plus one so this would be in the continuum limit this would be q dot is equal to minus a del i del x okay and i have actually used this expression while writing it so this is what i have in the continuum domain and similarly the voltage drop equation which was q n plus one minus q n i think or i can just this was q n minus one minus q n by c is equal to l di and dt this again i can write in the continuum limit as minus a by c del q del x is equal to l del i del t okay i think you are getting the idea here so these are the equations that i am writing uh, in the continuum limit now let us write down the wave equation in the continuum limit we can easily get it uh, from this discrete version of the equations for that i simply need to uh, consider say let me say this equation number two here 
if I consider that equation say q n minus 1 by c minus q n by c is equal to l d i n d t let me take time derivative of this equation on both sides then what i am going to get is this 1 by c i have q n minus 1 q this one and then q n dot that is equal to l d 2 i and d t 2 i can get rid of the charges by using uh, this equation that i read have written earlier that the search conservation that is 1 by c q dot n minus 1 so that is i n minus 1 minus i n okay i hope you can see that this is i have from for uh, this part and for the other part we can write i n minus i n plus 1 and the whole thing is equal to l d2 i n d t2 this we can further write it as 1 by c i n plus 1 plus i n minus 1 minus twice i n is equal to l d2 i n d t2 now you can recognize that in the continuum limit this part is actually second order derivative of current with respect to position so in the continuum limit we can write it as uh, this whole thing as a square by c del 2 i del x2 that is equal to l del 2 i del t2 or i can write it as del 2 i del x2 is equal to lc by a square del 2 i del t2 so this further i can simplify by writing is a del 2 i which is a function of position and time now del x2 is equal to small l and small c del 2 i delta t2 which is a i is a function of position and time and here this small l is uh, inductance per unit length and small c is the capacitance per unit length and these uh, quantities are actually the physical quantity of the transmission line and they do not depend on our discretization independent of that and uh, okay now you can see that this equation is nothing but the wave equation just recall that the wave equation that you must have learned earlier somewhere is given by is of this form that is second order in space and second order in time where f is a disturbance which is a function of position and time and this disturbance this equation simply tells that f propagates or travels propagates with speed with speed v okay so comparing this equation with our uh, equation that i obtained for current it simply says that uh, current uh, uh, propagates like a wave in a transmission line with speed 1 divided by square root of lc so this is the speed of a current signal in a transmission line and i think uh, and because that this both small l and small c are constant so uh, this um, velocity uh, speed is basically a uh, constant quantity it do not depend on frequency or wavelength so in the transmission line if we can create a disturbance of a disturbance of charges like this and as i explained earlier so in this whole system we will be able to get a propagation of a signal in the form of current okay and now because we have gotten uh, classically we have got that the current uh, propagates like a wave in a transmission line uh, that means the current can carry information so the next problem is to how to quantize this transmission line how to quantize this particular problem and this is what we are going to do now but before uh, actually we do that 
let us see how we can quantize LC circuit or LC oscillator which is the basic building block of a transmission line so the topic that we are now going to discuss is quantization of LC circuit and this is going to prepare you for the bigger thing that is the quantization of transmission line which we are going to discuss next in the previous module we learned the general procedure for the canonical quantization of a classical system the procedures were as follows the firstly get the first get the lagrangian lagrangian of the classical system then get the canonical conjugate momentum actually get the conjugate momentum get the conjugate momentum and once you get the conjugate momentum then work out the hamiltonian or find the hamiltonian of the classical system and then look for the canonically conjugate variables look for canonically conjugate variables Uh, the canonically conjugate variables are the ones that satisfy the Hamilton's canonical equation of motion and finally replace the Poisson brackets by commutation bracket and write the conjugate variables as well as the Hamiltonian in the operator form. Now here exactly the same procedure we can apply for quantization of our LC circuit. So we have this inductor with inductance l and this capacitor with capacitance c we assume that the upper plate is positively charged and the lower plate is negatively charged upper plate has a charge a q and the current is flowing in this direction and just we have discussed already that q dot is equal to minus i and also we have worked out the equation of motion of the lc circuit q double dot is equal to minus one by lc q now because we know this equation of motion so we can straightforwardly uh, guess the lagrangian of the system that is l is equal to half l i square you see i am using before an l here this is for the lagrangian and this l represents the inductance minus q square by 2c uh, q here is the generalized coordinate so i have half l q dot square minus q square by 2c to check if uh, this is indeed the uh, correct lagrangian uh, we can actually uh, we must obtain the equation of motion from the Lagrange equation of motion. The Lagrange equation of motion with Q as our generalized coordinate is this. Uh, del L, del Q here minus D of DT. Del L, del Q dot is equal to 0. Now, if you put this Lagrangian expression here in this equation then you will see the first term is going to give you simply q by c minus then the second term is going to give you l q double dot is equal to zero so quite clearly you will get q dot double dot is equal to one by l c into q and this is indeed the equation of motion so the lagrangian that we have written is absolutely correct now as regards the canonically conjugate momentum so p is equal to del l del q dot and that would turn out to be simply l q dot and in terms of current i can write it as l i so maybe you recognize that l i is nothing but the magnetic flux in the circuit which i can represent it by this symbol so phi here is magnetic flux so when i take charge as my generalized coordinate the generalized momentum or conjugate momentum is minus of the magnetic flux in the circuit 
gives the conjugate momentum in the problem so the hamiltonian now is a function of the generalized coordinate q and the momentum phi and we know that the hamiltonian is uh, written like this q dot p generalized coordinate uh, the velocity basically and p generalized momentum minus the lagrangian so p is equal to l q dot so if you put it here then you will get l q double dot q dot square minus l is half l q dot square minus q square by 2c so immediately you will get this equation you will get q square by 2c plus half uh, l q dot square right so this is what you will get and you can in fact write from here because hamiltonian is a function of charge and the moment uh, this q and this magnetic flux so better we write it like this q square by 2c plus phi square by 2l because q dot square is equal to i and we have phi is equal to li so i've just utilized it and so this is our hamiltonian okay so what about the canonically conjugate variables here obviously q and phi are the canonically conjugate variable but to ensure that let us see this canonical equation of motion gives us q dot is equal to del h del p that is the momentum and now momentum let me write once again that this is equal to li or actually minus phi okay so in fact uh, better i can write this hamiltonian as h is equal to q square by 2c plus this p square by 2l so therefore del h del p is simply going to give me p by l and p by l is nothing but q double dot right because p is equal to l q that's what i have written here yeah l q dot so therefore yeah so that's correct and the other one this momentum p dot is equal to minus del h del q and this is going to give me from this uh, hamiltonian i will get minus q by c and because p dot is equal p is equal to l q so it is l q double dot is equal to minus q by uh, minus q by c so we get the equation of motion so quite clearly we are obtaining the equation of motion and and correct equation of motion so q and phi are charge q and this magnetic flux phi are canonically canonically conjugate variables in the problem conjugate variables so therefore we can invoke uh, quantization now what we have to do we just have to replace this q by operator q and phi by operator phi and that would be equal to is cross and this hamiltonian we'll write it as here we have written so that would be q square by 2c plus phi square by 2l so this is the way we can quantize uh, lc oscillator uh, you may actually know that uh, in the hamiltonian formalism both generalized coordinate and momentum are given equal uh, weightage in fact it, it, the hamiltonian formalism is quite flexible so we can ex quantize the lc oscillator taking uh, magnetic flux as our generalized coordinate rather than the charge so if we take phi as our generalized coordinate generalized coordinate okay and q as our generalized momentum generalized momentum so that's if we do that we, only thing is that we have to be be careful about the commutation relation here but anyway 
if I if I take because if I take phi not minus phi then that's correct the commutation relation would remain intact uh, so I encourage you to do this and you will indeed get the same expression as your Hamiltonian that would be phi square by 2L plus q square divided by 2c that would be the hamiltonian only difference here is that this time the magnetic flux phi this is magnetic flux magnetic flux phi is now our generalized coordinate and charge is our new generalized momentum in uh, in fact let us check whether indeed this is the correct one so if i put it in the canonical hamilton's canonical equation of motion so phi is my generalized coordinate so therefore phi dot is equal to del h del p tilde let me write for our new generalized momentum which is nothing but the charge so therefore you will get it to be simply q by c here because remember here generalized momentum is nothing but charge q okay and phi is uh, magnetic flux so therefore it is l i l i dot okay that is q by c and this is correct because uh, this we already know okay this is uh, another thing is about the momentum p dot is equal to minus del h the generalized coordinate is phi and that would be uh, from here we get it as phi by l and this is nothing but minus i and because p is this generalized momentum actually p tilde that is your q so q dot is equal to minus i this is also we know that this is correct now by the way in this case the lagrangian would be turned out to be c by 2 phi uh, dot square minus phi by twice l okay when i take magnetic flux as my generalized coordinate this is the lagrangian that i should take and in fact we will see that while quantizing transmission line we should take magnetic flux as our generalized coordinate not charge q and we'll discuss about it now going back to our transmission line let us propose qn charge as our coordinate and see what happens as you know uh, the lagrangian for the basic unit cell for this transmission line which is the lc circuit uh, the lagrangian is written like this l is equal to half here this l represents the inductance half l i square minus half q square by c in fact this first term is actually called magnetic energy this is the magnetic energy term and this second term is the electrical energy or it's also called the charging energy term charging energy uh, so we need to write down the charging energy and the magnetic energy for the full transmission line now the given the charge distribution given the charge distribution q we have to find the current i to write down the lagrangian for the transmission line now we know that uh, from the charge conservation that rate of change of charge at the node n q n dot is equal to the current that is flowing into the node and the current flowing out of the node so this we know from charge conservation we can use this uh, we can use this expression to find out the current at node n so i can write i n is equal to q1 dot plus i n plus one now i can write express i n plus one as again you can see from this expression itself i can write it as q uh, q n plus one dot here plus i n plus two 
and then I can again write it as q n dot plus q n dot n plus one q dot n plus one plus q dot n plus two and in fact I will get another term i n plus two so we'll get q dot n plus three plus so we'll get a series like this so as you can see uh, from this we can try to find out the current but the problem here is that we cannot write down the magnetic energy term uh, because of this expression here from from the current expression as you can see that this is actually results in an infinite sum infinite sum and that means that we are running into a problem if we choose charge as our coordinate we will not be able to write down the energy term in the lagrangian or the hamiltonian and mine it uh, you have to note that we have to find magnetic energy at each node at this node and then we have to find it at this node as well n plus one at node and n minus one at node and so on and already uh, we are running into trouble even with a single node only so therefore uh, choosing uh, charge as the coordinate is not a good idea while we try to write down the Lagrangian for the transmission line now then the next option is uh, what about the magnetic flux so now let us take let us take magnetic flux and then which is our magnetic flux as our coordinate as coordinate so we know that the magnetic flux is a at a particular node n is a time integral over voltage so phi n i can write it as say minus infinity to some time t and that is the voltage at the node uh, n and this is the integral this gives us the uh, magnetic flux and we know that the voltage at node n i can write it as uh, q charge at the node n divided by the capacitance dt this so from here you can see that i can write charge at the node n as simply capacitance into time rate of change of the flux magnetic flux so given the flux phi n at node n we know the charge qn at node n and we need to take simply the time derivative of the flux then we will be able to know the charge now what about the current what about the current because that is where we run into uh, trouble when we took charge as our coordinate now let us consider fluxes at node uh, n here at this node as well as say n minus one at node and take their difference and then take the time derivative so what i mean to say is uh, say is this take the flux at the node n, mi n minus one and take the flux at node n and then take the time derivative here so if i do that from this expression you can see that i can write it as uh, q n minus one minus q n by c it is easy to you can easily see this and what is this quantity this quantity is nothing but the voltage drop across between these two nodes and this voltage drop is responsible for the current i n and this i can write as l i n dot okay so we have an equation connecting the time derivative of the magnetic flux to the time derivative of current so if we integrate it then we will get phi n minus 1 minus phi n is equal to l i n plus some integration integration constant right this integration constant can be taken to be zero as in the infinite past say there was nothing current and fluxes were zero so therefore 
I can take this constant to be 0 and then we will simply have phi n minus 1 that is the difference of flux magnetic fluxes at the nodes is equal to L into I n. In fact, this is the fluxes at nodes, fluxes at nodes and this is simply the magnetic flux magnetic flux in the coil or in the branch okay magnetic flux in this in this branch okay so what we get is that we can obtain the current just by taking the uh, differences of magnetic flux while we can get charge by taking the time derivative of the flux now we can write down the lagrangian for the full transmission line so the lagrangian is because now i have taken the uh, magnetic flux as my coordinate so the first term would be here now the electrical energy electrical energy just remember that why i take charge as my coordinate i got the magnetic energy as the first term and the electrical energy as the second term now here it would be the reverse so it would be electrical energy minus the magnetic energy when i take magnetic flux as my coordinate and that would be i have to sum up all this at if i have to find this energy difference at all nodes so at a particular node n i have this c by 2 electrical energy c by 2 phi n dot square right that is basically the current okay uh, charge actually that is the yeah this is the charge term okay and then i have minus half l i n square that's the current that's a magnetic energy part and this i can write as c by 2 phi n dot square minus now i can express this current in terms of the magnetic flux as phi n minus 1 minus phi n whole square divided by 2 l and here this this curly L is the Lagrangian and this L is our inductance. So this is the Lagrangian for the discrete version of the transmission line. Okay, this is the Lagrangian for the discrete version of the transmission line. But it is straightforward to get the continuum version of the transmission line. What we just have to take here, if we go to the continuum, this difference in fluxes, I can express it uh, should be actually converted to a spatial derivative a spatial derivative we can write it as when we go to the continuum domain this kind of things we discussed already that would be say del phi del x and this sum i i have to convert it to an integral in fact if you look at the uh, observe the transmission line carefully spacing between the nodes is a right that is the unit cell size and we have to take sum over different nodes and this i can write it as integral integral dx okay so then this lagrangian this for the discrete transmission line i can write uh, in this form also a i will explain it a into small c small c is the capacitance per unit length just recall that capital small c is capacitance per unit length and then we have a small l that would be inductance per unit length that's what we are going to utilize here so this is small c here okay small c phi dot square minus a by twice l del phi del x whole square and because as in the limit when a tends to zero i can write for the continuum case for the continuum version of the transmission line i can write replace this sum by integral and i can write dx 
and the bracketed term would be c by 2 phi dot square minus 1 by 2 small l small l is the inductance per unit length del phi del x whole square so this is the lagrangian for the continuum model but uh, for our quantization pur purpose uh, we will take the discrete model rather than the continuum so we will consider this lagrangian not this continuum one and along with some boundary conditions now the conjugate momentum is from this lagrangian we can write it as pn the momentum del l of phi n dot phi n that's the magnetic flux is our coordinate so from it we can see that that would be simply c into phi n dot and which is nothing but the charge q n and the hamiltonian the hamiltonian for the discrete transmission line would be there would be p n momentum into coordinate time derivative to the coordinate and the minus the lagrangian and you can easily work it out and if you work it out you will find that this would be simply p n square by 2c plus phi n minus 1 minus phi n square divided by twice l so as it uh, we have already discussed about uh, the quantization of lc circuit earlier taking the magnetic flux as our coordinate and the charge as our momentum we found that these are canonically conjugate variables so therefore here also that's what we will find in this in the case of uh, transmission line as well so now we are ready for quantization so while we quantize it we now simply replace this coordinate phi n by the corresponding operator and the momentum p n we replace it by the momentum operator and then write down the heisenberg uncertainty relation in this commutation form phi n dot cap p n and that is equal to i s cross actually more generally we can write it as more generally we can write phi n and p n dash is equal to i s cross delta n n dash in fact uh, the coordinate and the momentum belonging to different nodes say phi n the commutation relation between phi n and the momentum p n if this n and n days are not equal that means they belong to different nodes then this commutation relation would be, be equal to zero so as you can see now we have this quantum mechanical hamiltonian that we have to write in this operator form that would be equal to p n square by 2c plus phi n minus 1 minus phi n cap whole square by 2l okay this is quadratic in position quadratic in position and quadratic in momentum and it should remind you about the so-called uh, harmonic oscillator uh, simple harmonic oscillator hamiltonian also you should note that this hamiltonian is actually translationally invariant because the transmission line that we have uh, uh, taken this transmission line is translationally invariant each cell in the transmission line is equivalent to one another and in fact this is what we are going to exploit that means the invariance translational invariance of the transmission line we are going to exploit uh, to write the hamiltonian in terms of normal coordinates by choosing 
appropriate normal modes and we are going to discuss it in the next class so in this class we learned about transmission line and we saw that indeed uh, a transmission line supports a wave in the form of a current and then we also learned how to quantize an lc oscillator which is the building block of a transmission line and it turns out that taking the magnetic flux as the uh, coordinate rather than the charge is more beneficial if we are interested in quantizing a transmission line. In fact, taking the Hamiltonian for the discrete transmission line, we saw how it can be quantized. However, this Hamiltonian can be written in a more useful form using so-called normal coordinates and that's what we are going to do in the next class. So see you in the next class. Thank you.